everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. And if you're new, then welcome. My name is Sammy. On this channel, we do DIYs with signs and there's always tons of laughter to be had. Today's video is going to be Dollar Tree fall DIYs. I told you I wasn't done doing Dollar Tree. So I hope you guys enjoy it and let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Of course, I couldn't leave this fall season without using at least one of these pieces from Dollar Tree. So I chose the little pumpkin pie piece take the twine off the back, then I'm gonna grab my drill and I'm going to grab a piece of wood. I put that behind so of course I don't drill into my table. Not that it's like pretty or anything, but you know, just, just, just do as I say, okay. All right, now we're gonna take some wood beads. Now, I like to pre-lay out my beads so I know the length that I want. I like it so that I can kind of set up and see like, do I want smaller beads in between? Do I just wanna leave it one size bead? So this is this is how I do it. I like having a nice visual. And it also saves it, well, saves you beads that you don't have to paint, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm gonna grab my Tupperware dishes from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna spritz all my beads with some water. Then I'm gonna put some white acrylic paint in there. I'm going to shake these up, get them really coated. Now with my first coat, I'm trying to completely cover my beads. I'm going to drop them into the lid and then I'm going to get my heat gun and I'm going to get those all dried up. Now I'm going to take this second Tupperware dish with a lid. You could see I'm, it almost looks like I'm just rubbing a light amount of hazelnut on the bottom. You want a very light amount when you do this. I'm going to close those beads back in and I find that the trick here is shaking them up and down versus side to side. When you go side to side, it coats it more and when you go up and down, it has more of like the speckling effect. So after I dried them, I'm like, okay, this needs a little bit of orange. So I add the pumpkin by Waverly to the bottom while the paint is still wet and then I'm gonna close that up once again and I am going to shake it. You can do this, you guys, with any color. I feel like it takes the beads up just a notch from a plain color. I love how they turned out. Um, and then since this is chalk paint, I just put some warm water in the Tupperware and it cleans right up. So after those are dry, I'm going to take my twine and we are going to make our tassel. So I just keep looping this over and over and over and over and over and over again. I'm going to cut the bottom of that off. You know when you haven't made something in a long time and you second guess everything you're doing and they make it 10 times harder? That's what I was doing right here. So I'm going to go about a half an inch down, tie a double knot, and then I like to, because I don't want to see that knot, I wrap the twine around and then tack it off in the back with some hot glue, cut that excess off. Now I'm going to get some more twine. I'm gonna string it through the hole that I drilled. I'm gonna apply some hot glue at the tips so that my beads go on there nicely and we don't fray it. And then I'm going to do, um, I think these, I wanna say 15 millimeter and then whatever is below that is what <laughs> these beads are. And I'm gonna do one bigger, two smaller, and I'm just gonna rotate that all the way down until I get to the end and need to attach. This would look so cute with the cherry sign too and would go perfectly on tiered trays or even kind of like draped over a recipe book. Oh geez, I'm putting the tassel on. So now I just strung the remainder of the twine through the hole of our tassel. I tied that off in a double knot and then hide the knot inside the loop of the tassel. And you can do this with other colors of twine. You can do the tassel with ribbon. So many options, but I really love how this turned out. And I think that the cherry one would look just as cute as a beaded garland as well. So I really hope that inspired you. Our next one, we're gonna grab a Dollar Tree tag sign. I am taking Plaster by Waverly, and I am going to give this a messy coat. And you guys know I'm gonna say, you do you. If you like it nice and clean, paint it nice and clean with a sponge roller. If you like the rustic look, then do it how I'm doing it right here. So after I'm done applying all this paint, I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry. And then because, <laughs> I'm a pro crafter. I just grabbed something that is near me. Ooh, 
Look at that a cowlick on the back of my head. And I am gonna tape this off and we are gonna grab Pumpkin by Waverly or like I said, you could do any color. You could do like a, a cheetah stencil. <laughs> oh, I know you guys were thinking that was coming in this video, but it's not. And I am gonna do two coats of Pumpkin by Waverly down here. And I don't know why I put this part on so long so you guys could watch me paint this but you're welcome if you guys didn't know how to paint this is how it's done now I'm going to take this wreath I have no idea where I got this from it was in my fall box and I am going to just hot glue this straight onto the tag now I don't know what this was wrapped in but the glue and this wreath adhered together so quickly and dried so fast it was weird, but I was totally down with it because it made my life so much easier. You could also um, make these uses using the beaded garland from Dollar Tree as well and some floral picks. Now we're going to take my IOD stamps in the cursive and I am going to first, the trick with the cursive ones is you have to do them one by one. You can't just put them on a mat like I do the other ones where I line them up. You have to do these step by step, one by one step. No, I won't sing it. And we have to layer. That way we can make sure the connection of the cursive is nice and neat. So you guys know, or for those of you that don't know, this is Iron Orchid Designs. I get these from Bonda at paintedheirloom.com. You could also go on IOD's website and find a local retailer that might sell them close to you where you can just go pick them up. So this is, how, look at how good that looks and how clean, absolutely love it. And now I'm gonna cover the back cause you guys know I don't roll that way. I mean, if you wanted a double sided sign, you got fall and then you got Christmas on the back. So you do you boo, but I'm gonna cover mine up because this will be going to my booth. So. I'm going to put that on. You guys know I take my craft knife, clean it up. Look at how finished that looks. I love it. I just get my pencil, pop the hole back through. We put the twine in and now you have for yourself this really cute door hanger. And look at how clean that stamp is, you guys. So clean and you could use those stamps on anything. Now, I, this is simple, you guys. It's simple. It's easy. I get that you guys know how to paint a pumpkin. I, I totally get it. But what I had to show you was one, these are from Dollar Tree. No joke. These are from Dollar Tree. And I wanted to show you the DIY dark wax, which is absolute. Did I already show that to you? I did. No, I didn't. It hasn't come yet. Okay. Anyways, so I'm stippling on moss onto this. I'm going to put one coat on. Now I'm going to take this DIY dark wax and let me tell you, this stuff is just as amazing as the white wax. It has a thick buttery consistency, just like the white wax does. And I love it. Now we all, most of us have used the antique wax by Waverly. And just like the other waxes, those are very liquidy. And this one, the DIY is fluffy. So I, I love it. You guys, I can't say enough good things about this. So I'm just taking my stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I'm dusting that over. Then I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm going to wipe the excess of that off. Cause I really wanted it to blend in to that top texture of the pumpkin. I will grab what, which one is this? Uh, to not toffee. I'm drawing a blank, you guys. Okay, this brown color from Truffle, Truffle. Okay, then I had to try it another time with sandstone because like this color vibe is totally what I'm going for. And then I dust that dark wax on top of the sandstone and ugh, oh my word, do you see that? Do you see all of the details popping out of that? It is Gorga. Absolutely <laughs> Gorga. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. Look at this, how I set it up. Is that not my vibe right now or what? Oh my gosh. 
I love it. I think I'm going to kind of do something like this on my coffee table, this like whole setup, but I'll add more. But I absolutely love this and hopefully it just gave you an idea to use darker wax with some things. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying these fall Dollar Tree DIYs. I know I am and I know I have a big stash, a box still full of Dollar Tree fall stuff that I haven't even got to. So that'll have to wait till next year, okay? Because we are winding down with fall. October 1st starts Christmas. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I will be putting out a little mega video. Um, actually, I already did of all of the fall 2022, say that 10 times fast, um, DIYs that I did. If you're still working on fall and you're not quite ready to move on, I'll put that down in the description box. And you guys know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you are digging this channel, then make sure you like and subscribe and please leave me a comment. It's a free way to help me out. It lets YouTube know that you are digging this video and they are more likely to recommend it out to other people. Check the links down in the description box. And with that said, you guys, let's get back into these fall DIYs. Here's our next one. Please tell me why this sign is pink because that is an odd choice for a fall color. Anyways, you guys, I had the best luck with this cutting board. One, the sticker came off so easy and then I flipped it around and the paper came off so easy. You know it's going to be a good crafting day when Dollar Tree signs do this, okay? So I am going to go and get cashew. You can see I have my brush angled vertically versus horizontally. And I don't know what it is about putting your paintbrush in this position, but it gives you this really great faux um, wood look, I guess you can say. I, I don't know. I've tried to explain this to you guys before and I never do a great job, but just it's all in the way that you angle your brush. So we're going to finish painting that. I'm going to let it dry. Then I'm going to grab my ruler and you can see I'm using my measuring mat to help me do straight lines. So you can see I'm lining it up. I'll get my ruler and then I line it up with the lines of the measuring mat. I use my, uh, what do you call this? Lead pencil to draw my lines and I'm going to repeat that all the way across. Jeez, my acrylic is horrible. All right, so now that I have that done, I just rub my finger over there. It gives it kind of just a shadowing effect. It gives it more depth. And now we have this really pretty faux panel look. Now I'm going to take this sign in at first. I totally thought I was going to leave it just like that. And then I was like, that doesn't look good. The sign's too big. So I pop out the sides, which were really easy. I take my craft knife just do two scores over that and they come right off. And of course I'm going to keep those cause they would be good to kind of put, you know, stands on or something. So after I take that off, all we're going to do is apply hot glue to the back of that, put this in the front. And let me tell you guys, this cutting board is probably the biggest cutting board I've seen out of the seasonal ones they've come out with. So definitely grab this one cause it is much larger. Now I'm going to take some brown raffia. I got this raffia at Dollar Tree and I'm going to do a raffia bow. I wanted it to have, it needed something. I needed to accessorize it, but I did not want to go overboard with a bigger bow because I didn't think it needed that much, but it needed something. So we're just going to gather some raffia in a loop. I'm going to tie it off in the middle and then you could see, I think I cut like an excess piece off right here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wrapping. Here you go. I just take a piece of the raffia and tie it off in the middle. And then I will cut the excess off, fan out my loops, and I will hot glue that to the top of this sign. Jeez, I guess I really wanted you guys to see all that mess. And then of course they needed to be a little bit extra. So I grabbed some twine. I'm going to do a little multi-loop finger bow and I'm going to layer that on top. This, it would also look really cute with maybe, um, a button or a split wood bead on there, or even some wood beans, beans, beads hanging down from it. But I really like the simplicity because I wanted all of the attention to be on the pecan pie sign. So hopefully you guys got a hold of both of these. And if not, you could also probably make a principal 
um, to do this as well. And this is how it came out. I really love it. I think it would look so beautiful in somebody's kitchen during the holidays and not even the holiday. This could be something that stays in your kitchen all year round. So I really love that I was finally able to use this item from Dollar Tree. Now, another easy peasy Dollar Tree squizzy one is taking this beautiful napkin, this floral, the, the flower pot with the flower in it. Gosh, I'm a mess is from Dollar Tree. And let me tell you, the quality is so nice. So anyways, I'm gonna take this napkin and then five million years later, I get the second ply off of the back. Now you can keep the, the second ply on there, you can. Um, but you know what, I'm not a decoupage master. I'm not gonna explain you know the benefits of it because I really don't know. So now I'm going to take my liquid patina from DIY. I am going to put that on to the pot and I am going to press down again. Sorry, I repeat myself if you're one of my like avid watchers, but sometimes there's new viewers and I know you there's easier ways to do it, but I just pat my decoupage down. It's just, it's just what I do. And I'm gonna wrap it around. Now, as I wrap it around, the napkin is gonna kind of move up on me. And that's okay because we are going to cover that upper like lip part. You'll, you'll pick up what I'm putting down in just a little bit. So we're gonna keep wrapping this around. Now, what I was saying about this flower pot thing, they came out in a bunch of different colors, but they were more springy than fall. This was the only fall one I found. However, you guys, the inside of this pot actually looks like soil. So if you find these, pick them up because there's so many different ways of, you know, bringing it up to a different stanza. Do you know what I'm saying? Now I'm going to put that, um, what is this? Oh my gosh. I'm going to put the decoupage medium, since I don't know what it's called right now, over this and let it dry. You guys, I'm running on coffee and an energy drink. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to take some twine. Uh, it was called liquid patina. There we go. Take the twine and you could see how like the napkin came up quite a bit. So I'm taking that twine. I'm going to just wrap it around the top so we completely cover that. And then we are done with this. This could be another cute tiered tray item. This could be a cute thing for you guys to sell at vendor booths. So I hope you guys like this one. I hope it gave you a, you know, a good idea what to do with these if you did find them. All right, now this one's fun. This one is, we're gonna take this coffee mug. Now there's two sizes at Dollar Tree. There's a smaller version, and then there, this one is the bigger one. So I'm taking the bigger one, tracing it around my Hobby Lobby scrapbook paper. Then we are gonna cut this out. I know it looks like I'm wasting a lot of paper, but I wanted like the pumpkins that were in this spot. So that's why I, it's smack dab in the middle. Now I'm going to take liquid patina. Now I will say you guys with this liquid patina and using the cardstock, I didn't find that it adhered as well as when I use Mod Podge with scrapbook paper. And I don't know if that is because I didn't apply enough of the liquid patina or maybe it was just the paper was too thick and Mod Podge is a thicker consistency. So just wanted to give you my opinion on using liquid patina with um, the scrapbook paper. So once that dries, I um, take the cork from Dollar Tree. I'm going to trace out what is going to be the lid of our coffee cup, and I'm going to cut that out. Now, this seriously took me like five minutes to get the backing off of it, but I did get the backing off and we are going to stick that straight to the top. Now, every part of me was like, this needs something in the middle. It needs something in the middle, like, you know, like a round thing to say like coffee or pumpkin spice. But if I would have done that, it would have covered that huge like arrangement of pumpkins. So I did it. Now I'm going to take this puzzle from a uh, Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cover the back with scrapbook paper. Now you guys, if you see these, grab them because the back is plywood and it stains beautifully. It does have that little, you can see on the top right, the little black stamp. 
but if you do paint it like a different color or if you hide it with whatever you know you're painting on there it these are amazing so I cover the back so that we don't know it's a puzzle. I'm going to take Cashew by Waverly and I am going to get this all painted up. And then we're just going to do the same thing we did in one of the previous. I'm taking a ruler. I'm going to use that to determine my width. Take my, um, my lead pencil. You could also use a marker or a paint. I'm going to hot glue our coffee at an angle. Easy peasy. And I'm gonna put it, yeah, I want it at the, the angle. See, doesn't it look like it needs something? What do you call the, the little like rings that go around it? But I decided against it because I was like, then that wastes the whole, the whole pumpkins on the scrapbook paper. Okay, now I'm gonna take my Oracle 651 vinyl and this image came directly from Cricut Design Space. So you can, I just looked up pumpkin spice and that's it, you guys. I thought that this was super cute and I'm totally doing a shameless plug in here. Um, I did come out with these coffee cups. They're on my website. They come in sand, bubble pink and ink. And it says be you, do you, for you, which is our motto here at Unicorn Dust Designs. And I finally made a logo. So go check that out, you guys. All right, so moving on to our next one. I have seen something similar to this floating around, but I thought we could make it different by using this paneled um, pumpkin. So I'm gonna take the twine off, then we are gonna grab, I think it was Plaster by Waverly. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a messy coat on this. Now, if you saw one of my most recent wood round videos, I painted and then I stained over it. Well, in my head, that's, what I was going for but then I took antique wax instead of wood stain and I put it over and I think it was maybe because I coated the entire thing with paint or maybe because the antique wax was really heavy but obviously a lot of this did not come off but everything happens for a reason because this gave me the coolest wood look ever so i'm gonna be doing this in the future because i love the way it came out so after that i take the paper towel and i rub the excess off and you could already see it gives you the coolest wood look i i don't know i like it all right now i'm going to take the word cutouts um or sayings from dollar tree and i'm going to paint them in all different colors i'm going to do pumpkin moss nantucket blue from folk art and then i think I think I used cashew as well. And what's fun about this is you could do your own color style or whatever vibe you're going for. And this can transition into other holidays because I know they make other cutouts. Now I'm gonna play around with the placement. And then I'm gonna grab my detailed glue gun. This glue gun is from Surebonder. It is Lily something. You could only get it on their website. However, they do have a just like plain black detailed glue gun as well. You could get it at Walmart. And I think I do have one in my Amazon store link down in the description box. So I am going to glue all of these down and then I'm going to put the twine back in the top. And of course, I needed something just a little bit more on here. So I made a finger bow. Again, bow tutorial is down in the description box for you. And it is in real time so you can learn how to do this bow and this is how it turned out i think it's really really cute and like i said if you change up the color scheme to match your home decor it will look beautiful i love all these colors together too so cute all right this one's going to be our last one now again or wait first i got this from savers for a dollar 99 there was four of them so i totally bought it and this vine is actually good quality, so definitely keeping that too. All right, taking the wreath, I'm gonna trace this out and then I'm going to cut it out. Now, I have seen something similar to this, again, floating around. I do not claim you guys to be like the inventor and creator of everything. I don't claim to be like, oh, I'm original, these are all my ideas. So I'm just putting it out there. I get inspired by so many things and I will always let you know if I know who the original creator is, but I do not. So 
I am going to take my Pumpkin by Waverly, and whenever I do a first coat on these tiles, I like to just do a messy first coat. Then I come back in, and in my second coat, I like to do like a stippling effect. So this is where I take my stencil brush, and I'm gonna pounce it up and down. I like doing it this way because then you don't see the brush strokes, and I don't know, maybe it also puts a little bit more paint and coverage on there, but this is how I do. Then we're going to take that DIY dark wax and look at this, you guys. Uh, there is just something that makes me so happy about taking wax, putting it over a detailed piece like this and seeing all of it pop out at you. It just puts the biggest smile on my face to bring it back to life again. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my word. Um, and I get my DIY stuff from upcyclebybree.com. Her link's always in my description box. So now I'm going to take that tile. I'm going to take some hot glue and let me tell you, this took 1,565,000 days to dry, okay? Because I had to hold this sucker down for so long for the glue to dry. I don't know what, what it was. Now I'm taking one of these pieces of wood from Dollar Tree. I tried to find like a flat edge and then I drowned, drowned it, it, drowned it. You, you guys know what I'm saying. With hot glue, held it there for what seemed like an eternity until it dried. Now I'm taking, the, you guys, this ribbon from Dollar Tree, I've had it in my stash and why haven't I used it? Because this stuff looks like high quality ribbon. Um, I'm just doing a cheer bow ribbon. I'm, I call it a cheer bow ribbon because that's how you make a cheer bow. And I'm gonna take some twine. I'm going to tie that off in the middle. And I've been using this bow a lot because it's seriously one piece of ribbon. So you don't have to cut multiple sections out, which is good by me. Then I'm going to take this greenery. You guys keep seeing me use this. I just pluck it off of a garland. I glued it to the side, but I do end up ripping it off later because it just looked weird. Now we grab our ribbon. We're going to glue that to the top. I did find a maroon button and glued it to the middle of this bow and it looks good. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Rip that off. That looks funny. And we are going to take some twine. I'm just going to double it up, tie a knot at the bottom, and then we are going to hot glue it to the back of the peduncle of I'm never gonna get tired of using the word peduncle now. So thank you to everybody who told me what the stem of a pumpkin is. Well, it's not a stem, it's a peduncle. And look at how cute this is. I think this is something that would look really cute if um, you put it like onto a piece of wood or onto like a bigger Dollar Tree sign um, just to make it a little bit more grand i guess you could say so i hope you guys got inspired and i wanted to show you this is one that i made for you guys as well that i was not recording the entire time so hopefully you grasp the concept of it because it came out beautiful and i was so sad that <laughs> i didn't film it so you guys thank you for spending your time with me i enjoy reading all of your comments so make sure to leave them down below it really does help my video reach other viewers i hope you have a great weekend and i will see you on tuesday there we go, where we kind of blur out the background, so it's all about me. Okay. Hey there, hi there, oh there, okay. Hey everyone. Hey, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy, if you're new to my channel, welcome. On this channel, you'll always get some laughter, DIYs, and nope, that is not cute, okay. Hey, I just had a coffee, but I'm already like, where's my energy drink? <laughs> okay. Focus. Dang. Killed it.